back? Maybe. Could be. So, you know, they made 159 um, recent journals, which were just videos. It was a show with an intro and everything else. It was really good. And Mark's great at producing uh, content. Yeah, yeah, and sure. some of the stuff that was in there, it was hard for me to see a lot of it. I recognized. And that's kind of what set me on this course was that, was seeing that. Because Carpenter was only one the one I knew that you were seeing the face of a Sasquatch. The true yeah. face of a Sasquatch. Yeah. But the Zaskis were just doing it uh, tenfold. <clears throat> just because yeah. it wasn't because of anything but what they had done to get it in this particular place, you know, this, yeah. this, uh, habituation that they had done with these creatures over the years. And they just, it works. Uh, and I'm I mean, it's, they're, there. they're, they're lucky, I guess, lucky, right. That where they live, there's such a, um, a heavy concentration of these things in that area. Yeah. But yeah. you know, a, a lot of things had to come together a hundred percent, Sure, sure. but yeah. there are a lot of people that live around there that don't notice right. these things right. going on. So it, it took a special kind of maniac like Mark to, to <laughs> discover this. And, I mean, he knows I, I say that with full, uh, with, with all the love and uh, <laughs> it's a term of endearment. Of I'll course. say that. But, of course. But, and uh, I got a little something that I wrote for you guys and we'll save that till the end. Uh, but for now, let's get into this. Kyle, do you want to just kind of tell us a little bit about who you are and and then uh, maybe get into how yeah, you yeah, felt sure. before you ever had an experience and all that? For sure, yeah. Um, so I grew up in um, southeastern Connecticut, um, right on the shoreline, which, you know, most people, it's not a Bigfoot hotspot. Um, Connecticut's really not looked at as a Bigfoot hotspot, and the shoreline certainly isn't. But, um, and, and, but I grew up, I remember going to the library as a kid. My mom used to take us there just because it was something cheap to do or free to do rent movies for 50 cents. You know, the books were free once you got your library card. And I remember the first time that I ever saw a picture of, you know, Bigfoot, it was Patty. And I was always into monsters and stuff. Those were the, the books that I always took out every time. Didn't matter if I read them before or not. And then, um, I remember seeing the picture in one of the books and there was a, a short like few pages and whatever reason just drew me in i mean I, I don't know why i was a kid but it just it just sucked me in and i was kind of enamored with the subject um but i i like a lot of people i think believe that it was one one thing one creature out in you know the pacific northwest you hear it a lot but i just kind of believe that there was one bigfoot right and uh, he was out there and wasn't anywhere near me, and I was probably never going to see it. Um, we, so we, but as a family, we didn't have a whole lot of money, and um, the Berkshires aren't too far from us. Um, it's, you know, northwest uh, Massachusetts, so it's a few hours away, but it was close enough that we could drive there, you know, and a, as a family with not a whole lot of money, camping was a, a, a pretty cheap vacation. And so we go camping up there and um, what we like to do though is we like to find a place that was kind of off the beaten path. We didn't go to quote unquote a campsite. We take the campers, uh, we go up with another family and we find like an old, you know, dirt road to drive down and, and find a place to pull off to the side, usually set the campers up back to back. And then we'd have a little spot next to the campers we had tables, chairs, fire, and place to cook and whatnot, radio. But we'd always go off into the woods, and we'd set up a wood camp with some tents and a fire out there. And generally, it was just the boys who went out there. And then, you know, the wives um, and the daughters stayed in the campers. And so on this particular trip, um, and I, I don't know if anything happened prior to this because – I think like a lot of people, you don't know that these things are even happening if you don't know that these things are out there, right? Like most people overlook so much stuff that's out there because you just don't notice it if you don't know. Um, noises in the woods, you just write else. off. 
Well, yeah, yeah, right. You write it off. Else. Right. So I don't know if things happened. I don't know if, you know, our, uh, my, our parents wrote this stuff off or what. But on this particular trip, it was it was different. <laughs> there was no, no writing it off at the end of this. Um, so the first night we had our, our little setup by the campers and we were playing music on the radio. And they had a, 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 our family's friends were there with us and they had a little dog. And um, the, the first thing that happened was the small dog love to kind of whine and, and, and make these like howls, but they're high pitched howls, like a little whiny, like a little dog does, you know, his barks were pretty high pitched and we were sitting around listening to the music eating and he had been doing his little barking and his howling. And we heard what sounded like a dog in the woods howling, (laughs) but it sounded just like him. Like it was kind of the same tone and pitch. Again, just kind of wrote it off. Like we're out in the mountains, we're in the woods. Maybe somebody could be walking their dog back there, whatever. So it was just brushed off. So we cooked that night. We played music and um, nothing happened when we were out there. When we woke up the next morning, we had left some stuff outside. There was some um, leftover food and, uh, that was taken and it was um it, there was a we had a a peanut butter jar out there um in one of the coolers peanut butter and jelly and the peanut butter jar had been opened like, like twisted off and opened um nothing had been taken out of it though that was kind of the strange part so again it was kind of wrote off like maybe some like meth heads in the woods i don't know but nobody really thought anything about it um the second night is when things got a little bit weirder we again we were we were playing music we cooked and we heard what like these um whistles that sounded like kind of almost to the tune of the music that was playing off in the woods and um it happened a few times and it was enough that, like, the wives kind of were going, you know, what, 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 what's going on here? What is that? And it made, you know, made the husbands kind of take a walk and look around. Nobody found anything. So we go back and we sit down. Um, as we're eating, uh, finishing up eating, we're getting ready to go off into the woods to the other camp. And something comes flying through the trees and lands probably three feet from us. I mean, you could hear it come through the leaves, you know, how you, and then it landed on the ground. You could hear it thud. So my dad got up and was looking around and, and he found a rock like where this thing, you know, where it sounded like it landed. And probably two minutes later, another one, boom. This happened probably, I would say five or six times. They all just we're just outside of where we were sitting right they none of them landed in the middle of the circle they're just outside of where we were sitting about a foot or two away so that was strange i de- my dad and his friend got up and his friend was a, a a former marine um and you know he was a pretty bad bad dude uh still is to this day even in his 60s um and he got up and and he had his gun and he yelled out, you know, hey, if you're messing around out there, you better stop it. We got kids here. Um, you know, go away. If you don't go away, I have a gun. You come closer and I'm going to fire this thing. Everything kind of stopped at that point. So we went to bed um, in the campers that night. And in the middle of the night, something woke uh, Chris and his family up because it, it hit the camper. I mean, loudly, like very heavy is from what he said. Uh, he, he, he I remember hearing my dad discussing it and he, you know, he's telling my dad, like, uh, I would, I, he, he was scared. It was that loud and he felt it shake. So he got up out of the camper again, came outside, um, took him a minute because he, you know, he put his clothes on, grabbed his gun. By the time he got outside, there was nothing there. He didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. So they decided they were going to take everything from outside and put it inside in case there was a bear because there's plenty of bear up there. Um, 
And so they took all the food and they put it inside the campers and all the other stuff they put away. The next day, uh, we went for a hike out in the woods and we hiked a ways. I mean, we, we usually did. And again, we, we didn't usually take trails because of where we were. We just kind of went off into the woods, made our own way. Um, it's, it was a lot of pine forest there. We, we got to an area where we were kind of sandwiched between two ridge lines. Now they weren't giant, but they were big enough and, um, they went on for a while. So we're on the path on the right hand side of uh, the ridge. There was some commotion at the top, um, some sticks breaking and, and some noises and, uh, it, it was enough to get everyone's attention. Then the rocks came just like the night at the camp rocks landing right in, in front of us on the trail. So now my dad and Chris are kind of looking at each other with a, a look of concern. Like, you know, this is, this is kind of strange. This is getting out of hand. We got kids with us. Like somebody's going to have to do something. Like they just had that look, you know, that look dads get, they had that look. And um, they didn't say anything though. So we kind of kept going. Another rock lands. Chris yells like loud. You know, he cursed and, and screamed out like, "We've had enough. Um, I've given you enough warning." And then he fired a shot into the air from his pistol. At that moment, it was like uh, it, I know it's cliche now, but like it was like a it was like a a, a, a Mack truck took off through the woods the, the amount of noise and commotion from the top of that ridge was like nothing i've ever heard still to this day there were trees breaking sticks snapping like bushes shaking and you could almost you could almost feel the footsteps we didn't know it then what that that's what that was but you could almost feel it like what when this thing took off um so we come around, the, the bridge has kind of come to an end now. They slope down. We round a corner. And as we round the corner, um, there's a set of bushes up in front of us, like probably about 30 or 40 yards up on the right-hand side, um, just kind of overgrowth uh, on, like, uh, on the right where the pine forest kind of ends and turns into like the other trees and stuff. Um, and those things started shaking violently. I mean, like, like violently back and forth. You, just, you could hear it. Again, Chris yells, and he goes to lift his pistol. And that was the moment that, like, everything in my life changed forever. This thing stepped out, and it, it when it stepped out, there was a tree that had a V in it. It stepped out in... Uh, in between that tree, and there was a, a I'm, I'm not an arborist, so I don't know, but I think maybe an oak tree um, on its left-hand side. It was probably about 10 inches around. It had its hand around this tree. Its head was inside that V, and it was kind of swaying back and forth. But it was shaking that oak tree like a baby swing. I mean, this thing was swaying like it was nothing. And it was just this one hand. And there was one thing I remember is that hand, the fingers on that hand wrapping around that tree, like uh, the whole way. And these things were like bananas. They were so big. The fingernails were thick. Like you could, you could see it. They were just thick and dirty. Some were cracked and broken. And he swayed in between that tree. And as he swayed, he... At one point, I know you said this in your story. We talked about this a little bit. He stuck his tongue out of his mouth sh straight out, and he tilted his head back with his tongue out like three times. It, it wasn't like he was licking the air, but the, the thing that like over the years that I've thought about it a lot, I almost wonder if it was another way to, to get a scent, right? Like to smell if something's around you, maybe if there's more of us around. Could be. Um. I mean, it's just kind of a hypothesis at this point. I don't think it's nothing. It's definitely nothing. I mean, this thing did it with purpose. 
right? It wasn't just making faces. It did it with purpose. Um, he showed his teeth a couple times to us. Uh, uh, his lips kind of curled up back, and his teeth were like horse teeth. I didn't see any fangs. There were no fangs. They were big, square, blocky teeth. And the one thing that when he when he showed them, I remember, is they were white, man. Like they were. He he must have had a great dentist because they were whiter than my teeth. <laughs> I just it stuck with me. It was weird because it's like, you, the, what are these things eating, and why are his teeth so white? It was definitely a male. Um, but he didn't look like a lot of the reports that I've heard. Um, if it. The w- the best way I can describe it is it looked almost Native American. Like, and I hate to say that because I don't want it to sound like I'm stereotyping, but like Native Americans have very strong features, right? And, the, and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, like you, you, you kind of know when you see somebody who's full-blooded Native. And he had very strong features like that, real strong high cheekbones strong jawbone um he had a short forehead it wasn't it wasn't very conical i mean it it did come up a little bit but it wasn't a very elongated head it came to a little bit of a point um hair was back really far like started back really far and it was very sparse he had no hair on his face except for just along like the 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 bearded area, like along the end, uh, underside of the jaw. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, like dark, dark, dark brown eyes with no whites. I didn't see any whites at all. Um, he, the shoulders on this thing were were really wide. Um, I, I couldn't tell you how wide, but they're wide. He wasn't extremely bulky. It, it was more like a, a like a. a a swimmer, like a, a really defined swimmer's body. He was very athletic and lean looking. Um, f- the forearms were uh, um, just as long as the upper arm, like the same size. There's no difference. Um, the legs were kind of weird though. The, f- the, the shin and the calf on his, on him, they looked sh- like almost too short, like, it was a very strange appearance. It just didn't look like they fit right. Um, he was, uh, I would say, more like a chestnut color, his hair. Um, and it was everywhere. Uh, but you could see through it on the chest and the stomach. It was thicker on the shoulders and the legs. Um, his calves were so big. <laughs> like so incredibly big they were i i've never seen anything like it not on a uh, a bodybuilder not in a cartoon i mean these things were huge man um he made a few sounds at us as he was still shaking this tree um i i never got the feeling like we were in i mean i was terrified um to the point that, like, I I was feeling like I was going to get sick. Um, and my dad had put himself between us, himself, and between uh, him and that th- and the thing. So, like, I was kind of in the middle of him and Chris. And, and Chris's son was um, to the right of me, also, like, kind of peeking. And then he would kind of hide behind his dad. Um, but he he would make these noises and I heard a lady explain it. Like she's called it ch- uh, chuntering. And it was kind of the, the, the best description of what it sounded like. If I could give it a name, like it was just a very strange um, communication that this thing was making. And I- I'm sure that this all, um, that this all happened because Chris grabbed his gun again. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive of it. I'm pretty sure that th- that's what made this thing mad to begin with, that he fired the shot in the air, because that's when it went from just a little rock throwing to, like, the more aggressive stuff with the trees and breaking stuff and, you know, running through the woods. Um, he let out a yell that was, uh, you know, I, 
I don't know, like a dinosaur. Like I never, never heard anything like it. it. Wasn't like a lion. It made a lion sound like a kitten. It was like a, it was just crazy. It was so deep. It reverberated so hard in your chest. Um, and I don't know if I, I mean that made, I don't know if that's what made you know made me feel even more sick. I don't know if because people talk about the infrasound. Um, because after that, um, I, I definitely remember feeling even worse, like dizzy, having a headache. Uh, my dad complained to one too. Um, Chris's son uh, was so scared he urinated. I mean, it was it was terrifying. It was terrifying. You know, wh- the thing about it, man, is like you. I, I was I was into the like into the subject, but I never in my life did I think I was ever going to see one. I didn't know if they were real. Like I thought it was a fun thing, like the Loch Ness monster to believe in, right? As a kid, you want to believe in things as a child, um, and unknown things are more fun to believe in. What? And you're told your whole life that like things like this don't exist, and then all of a sudden you're you're there, and reality slows down. It. it you know, seconds feel like hours. It makes you question everything, man. Like you, uh, uh, history, what they told you in school, what they told you in the Bible. You know what the uh, the, the leaders of the free world tell you every day. Like I question everything after this because I'm staring at a monster. Like a mon- monsters aren't real. You told that your whole life, and then there's a monster in front of you, and it's like my whole world was upside down, and it was like that for a very long time. Um, it, it changed everything. But so anyway, this thing, you know, lets out this yell, and we start backing up. At this point, dads are like, you know, freaking out. Like, let we gotta get, we gotta get out of here. We start to leave, and from the left side, um, the ridge came down, and you couldn't see around the back side of where it sloped down. Another one comes. And it's a female. Um, it was smaller. It was built like a, a, a mother. Like it was built like a mother. It had breasts. It had wide hips. Um, it was not built like this guy was muscular. And um, and he he when she came out, he looked like he was more mad and started making more noise and um, broke a limb off of that tree that was on the left hand side of him and we started backing up and at, they walked off to the right disappeared into the bushes we went back in between um uh the left hand ridge and the pine forest instead of going in between the two ridges and the whole way out these things followed us they weren't right in front of us but you could hear them the whole way they were off in the woods you could hear footsteps you could hear things breaking you could hear grunts, noises the whole way out. And it was a while. I mean, I, I don't know how far we were exactly into the woods, but um, it was probably about, I would say it was a good 10 to 15 minute walk, um, brisk walk. And and they were there the whole time. They probably stopped uh, maybe 50 yards shy of, of uh, where our campers were. And um, that was the last night we stayed. <laughs> we left. We left, and uh, you know, I I remember having a discussion with with the dads about like were they going to tell the wives, and there was like an there was even an argument there like that that's not what they saw. They they disagreed on what they saw, and they weren't going to tell them, and I think that you know, a lot of that happens to a lot of people. You don't want to say anything because you're just afraid people are going to go, you're you're nuts. You're crazy. There's no way these things are real. There's no way you saw this. Sorry. Yeah, that's, uh, there are several dead flies flying around in here. They just don't know they're dead yet. (laughs) One of them's been in here since April, I think. Oh, wow. (laughs) I'm kidding, man. (laughs) I don't think they do it about live, but about a week. <clears throat> but this is how important this is. That especially, especially for awareness. Okay, 
because we can all point back to some strange activity that we can't explain, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're unaware, there are things that led up to you seeing him. And I've got a theory about all this, what could be happening here, especially when it comes to this, this behavior that's not seen a lot when they act this way. But what happens is little things start to be thrown. What throws things? People, Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. You're, especially in the woods, anyway, in the United States. Right. That's what you're going to get. Things start to come in. You start to hear noises, things moving around. And then he's got your attention. All your attention is here. Mm -hmm. What if where you guys had gone and camped and set up was where his family was these there's the kids and 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 they can't get out of there maybe without you noticing so what well, does he do he gets your attention and then they slip away and i'm sure the gun didn't oh, make yeah. him very happy either no. You know, and, and so many similarities to what I had experienced is what you're talking about, swaying back and forth, the hand on the tree, the stick and the tongue out. Now, he didn't put his head back and like he was, you know, tasting the air or anything, but there's something to that. Mm -hmm. There, There is. That's mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. And maybe you're exactly right. Maybe it's getting an, a sense. Maybe it is tasting the air. Maybe it is getting a sense of you and what's around. Uh, you know, who knows? But there has to be a reason that they, this behavior happens either, either in their territory. Maybe you are right dead in the middle of it. Who knows? But I don't think it's for nothing. They don't seem to be just that kind of creature to just come out and show themselves unless no. it's for a reason. So. And we've been going there for years, man. We've, that, like to that, that same, same place. Yeah. It was October mountain. It, it, there in Mount Greylock, the two places we went the most, and and you know they're they're big they're big places like lots of lots of woods, man, lots of forests, lots of excuse me, <coughs> um, getting over this bug two weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah we we went there for years, and you know maybe some of those other things happened, but no one ever saw anything. Nothing ever escalated to a point where anything was thrown or anything like that. Um, but that day it did. And like you said, there's, there's gotta be a reason, so, but at the end of this encounter, look what happened. Another one came out. Now, I don't know if that I'm guessing, um, it is here. Oh, that's a very good, very yeah, good. Yeah. Todd uh, comes up with some stuff. He sent me some very creepy pictures. That's that, a really uh, good. Yeah, yeah. I wish you guys could see. He's got strange. He's on his, his strange land. That's 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 my friend Todd Sears. He lives uh Newfoundland. And, oh really? Uh, yeah. Some weird, strange. It's a strange land. Let me tell you. Well, I'm, uh, we we got to talk about the Bridgewater Triangle in Massachusetts because you talk about strange. That place is weird, man. It's so weird. It's one of the creepiest places I've ever been. But anyway, getting back to what we were talking about, like. I, t I fully agree with you that there's 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 too much um I, just from that short interaction with this thing like there's there is there's too much intelligence there for it to to be doing these things for no reason at all right and yeah. when you hear all the different encounters um it, it it's uh a lot of them have so much in common and like you said, they start off very innocent and then something happens that changes it. And uh, you didn't like, leave. Well, to me, that was the thing is, that, you know, we, maybe, we, went, we, we went in. Not that we didn't. We went in. <laughs> we went and, then, and then firing the weapon, you know, to me, that's yeah. that's like a challenge uh, almost. And here's uh, Miss Leslie, Cryptids Canada. If you guys haven't gone and checked out her channel on YouTube, you need to do that. The thing is, there doesn't have to be a reason. You're absolutely right. And then again, here, we have we don't have a clue what they do. I agree. We don't. And I don't think we ever will. All we can do is speculate on these things. Uh, we do that, obviously, for the show. And uh, but for me, I don't care. 
I don't care what they do. I don't care what they are. I know they're out there. Yep. I want other people to know because I care about them. Yep. I care about the people that go out there and are going to have ultimately some type of experience, whether they see one or not, they're probably going to have some type of interaction whether they know what they're interacting with or not. This is just how I feel about it. And if you're not prepared for that, if it's not in your, you know, your purview, if it's not a part of your thought process, there's, there are consequences for that. When, and if this creature steps out, how long did you go? How long before you went back in the woods? Oh, years, Carrie. I, I so I was 14 then. And, and, and mind you, like I am a, avid 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 animal lover i i spent my entire childhood every moment that i could in the woods that surrounded my grandparents house uh the woods that were down the street from our house you know to the point where like my mom would have to force me inside you know i'd go out as early as i could in the morning and i'd come back as late as i could in the evening and usually it took calling my full name with my middle name too and that usually meant oh, that i was in trouble the middle name come out carrie is my <laughs> middle name so Carry your ever, name? Yeah, so if I ever got the first name, yeah. yeah. You knew it. You better get in. Yeah, that was it. So exactly. So this is what I mean. Like I spent as much time as I could out there because I loved looking for salamanders and toads and you know, whatever I could find. And I'm still that way today. Like I, you know, I I, I feed the raccoons in the backyard and the possum that lives under my porch. Like just who That's I cool. am. Yeah, I love animals. I, I you know. <laughs> take care of a couple feral cats but this is why i i loved being in the woods and for me to not go into the woods it, it, you know the, it, if that doesn't illustrate to you like how traumatic this was and and it's so hard to it's so hard to get it across to anybody like it's it, i don't know you just can't put into words like I, I was afraid when it got dark out at night, like when I couldn't see and it, it, it didn't matter if it was a full like set of forest or if it was just a few bushes in the back of a parking lot. Like it scared me that much where I was terrified if, of things that I couldn't see. And I, it just shook me up for years, man. I didn't go back in the woods until I was in my twenties. And, and then it was like, I went in during the day with some friends on like short hikes and places that, I knew were, you know, like uh, uh, an arboretum where there was main roads that surrounded the whole thing and the woods weren't deep and thick and you could get out of there quick. Um, I only started going back in to do this stuff a few years back. And then um, the pandemic really kind of uh, pushed me to do it a lot more because there was nothing to do. Like I was going crazy. I was just, I was going crazy. I was sitting in the house. I was depressed and, you know, I knew I had to do something and I was, I was watching tons of videos. I was watching your show. I, you know, this is, this is my favorite show on, on, on the subject. I think yeah, you, it is the dude I'm dead serious. I, I say to people like anyone who will listen, I think that what you and Mark have done for this subject is, uh, is groundbreaking. I, I I'm, completely sincerely honestly i think it's groundbreaking i think that i don't think there's anybody out there that's getting the evidence that's pushing the envelope that's consistently in these areas and finding the stuff that you're finding on a regular basis it just isn't i mean it's it's crazy and i watch a lot. i watch a lot well I'll, I'll say this and isaac newton said if i've seen farther than others it is because I'm standing on the shoulders of those who came before me. And that's exactly how I feel. Now, equipment is better. We know a little bit more, I think, than back in the day. But there are a lot of things that, that researchers went through that if you look and, and read these books that these oh, guys I put out, John Green, Renee Hendon, you can, you can pick up some things because they spent a lot of time. Bob Titmus out there, you know, in the 60s and 70s, uh, when, you know, Bigfoot research really started uh, yeah. in the United States anyway. Uh, and, and you can kind of pick up um, the, the basics, I guess, which is all we ever get of the basics. But for us, it, the equipment just got better. 
and yeah. we we happen to have the means to get better equipment. So I appreciate you saying that. I do, but I don't think we're breaking new ground. I just think we're taking we're taking the ground that's broken and, and maybe making taking hopefully uh, taking a few steps forward with it. Uh, we need people paying attention. That's all there is to it. More people, whether you believe any of it or not, we need people paying attention to this subject because the more people we have behind us, it's only a matter of time. You know, these creatures are being kept hidden. The, the beings themselves make it hard enough. So uh, we, I was going to say that. That's the other thing. Like the, the government Whoever. There's no I way. Say it's, I don't want to say it's the G word <clears throat> because who knows who it is. Even, but even even in you know the government is so compartmentalized, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So we could generalize and say that, but it's some agency that's funded that are probably studying these creatures. But when you're keeping something hidden, it's just, it's just a matter of time. We're getting closer and closer and closer. We're learning enough now, I think, especially about where some of these creatures are. I can take you to a bush in Florida right now and probably film one. That's so crazy. Just because of the research, Mark, what Mark and Melanie have done over the years, being there, uh, myself, out there at night, man, I cannot describe to you the feeling that I have when I'm out there at night. And I try really hard to go to do something that's going to help me get beyond that. I want to go be, do something by myself, take a walk through the woods alone and sure. just try to get myself uh, used to that because it's difficult for me. It's difficult for Mark. Mark's good. He hides it very well. Um, yeah. He'll just, anything happens and he, everything shuts off and he goes after it. And I yeah. just, I'm not there yet. So he's definitely, he's definitely helping me with that. But I want to remind everyone now that if you've got questions for Kyle, put those in caps for us, uh, and I'll star those, and we'll save them for uh, the last part of the show. Uh, I don't have a time limit on this show tonight. We, we run until we're done. Uh, but I, I do want to shout out to Jack Melton. I'm sorry I forgot that earlier. Thank you for that, that PayPal, Jack. We appreciate you very much. I mean, it's almost every show at this point you do that, and it, it really means a lot. It helps us out. There's, some, there's something that uh, – my good friend Fran said, <laughs> and she said, Carrie, you kill me every time you say that. I don't care, but I get what you mean and are saying. And let me clarify just a little bit about that, because there are some things that I care about. OK, when it comes to these creatures, but only when I'm out there and it's the things that I know they're capable of doing. Mm hmm. I care about those things, especially, you know, being out there. I don't, I really, I don't care about them sitting here talking to you, but when you're out there, yeah, there's, there are certain things you should care about, but I can't afford to, to really sit and break my brain trying to figure out. I hear too much. I, people call me all the time. I hear stories all the time. And it's always, there's so many similarities and so many differences and working it all out to what's what. It will it will fry your brain if you don't uh, just say stop. <laughs> and when I decided that I was going to buck the trend and go back in the woods, and I said I'd never do it. I had no reason to. I have anything to prove to myself. I'm not going to prove anything to anybody else. Uh, and and I was wrong about that. Ultimately, thinking about it, that this is what I need to do. I need to go out there. And get try to get something better than what we've got. We've got to try to figure out a way to catch them on camera. Uh, we've done that, but we got to get them moving. We got to catch them moving, walking off. Uh, you know, they just don't move. <laughs> That's the thing. So we've got to figure out, and we're going to do some things. We're we're going to work out some ways to, to hopefully to hopefully get that done. But yeah, when I when I decided to do that, that's when. I just couldn't think of all the stuff that Sasquatch does and doesn't do. And, and I, I listen to people. I, I talk to so many people that will never come on this show. They just want someone to talk to. And I'm here for you. If you need somebody to talk to, that's going to believe you. I'm your guy. So I'm here. You guys can call me. I put my phone number out here all the time. Uh, the Bigfoot phone number six, zero one, two, one, five, zero, five, eight, one. You can text call. If I don't call, if I don't answer, I'll call you back. 
every time because I know what it's like. And it's a lot better when you when you do have uh, someone to bounce things off that can say, because I can probably compare someone else's story or parts of it to yours and confirmation just helps people feel better that they're not sure. nuts. And that's, that's what I hope that I can do. I, I think that's probably the, the most important thing that makes me feel good at all is talking to other people. So don't feel like I, that I'm not available for you because I will definitely make myself available for you. Uh, if you have an experience, you need to get out. Um, I'm Love just, I, I'm starring the stuff's in caps right quick. Go ahead. Well, you're Kyle. the listening to you uh, on your odyssey. Um, was was the first time that I ever even thought about talking about this with anybody outside of you know the people who were there. Um, you know, I, I didn't I, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my friends. I didn't tell anybody I was with. I didn't you know nobody. Nobody knew except for the people that were there. And even then, like like I said, the, the dads, you know, it, when you when I'd bring it up, it'd be kind of brushed off or. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. That kind of thing. Um, but it was, it was watching your Odyssey uh, that was kind of the start of me even thinking about it. So you know, I think I think what you're doing is 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 working. And I, and and the thing is too, man, is like there are so many more like people out there who are doing this stuff now, who are trying to push this knowledge trying to get it out there trying to make it more mainstream and trying to let people know like they're there and you're just missing it because they're there and they're everywhere yeah because they're even sure. here in connecticut probably not on a scale like they are in florida but they're here in certain places i mean I've i don't seen... know man i don't know I, I think they are i think they're i think to me they're everywhere I, I, think I, I, I don't think Florida, the only thing I think is special about Florida is they got to get close. If they're going to watch you, they they can't get way away, three, four hundred yards away up on some hill to watch you because it's flat and it's so right. thick. Hundred yards. We got a place we go. It's a little cut over 150, 160 yards to the edge of a tree line. But to me, that's close enough that yeah. we can actually catch them on film. So I think they're around. They just stay far, so far back from us. Uh, that they don't want to be detected. And I saw Andy gone fishing. have not seen him in so long. Good to see you back here, buddy. Speaking about it helps compre decompress fears and failures of going into the woods once you have an experience. 100%, buddy. I agree. You got to talk about it. You got to get it out because uh, what I did, and I don't want enough about me anyway, but I'll say what I did was that. Turned away. Didn't want to talk about it. Didn't want to think about it. But there wasn't an, as many places to go. Right. You had coast to coast AM back then, and that was pretty much it. YouTube right. was just coming, just just being a new thing. And I remember going through Bigfoot videos back in the day, and you see Bigfoot caught on tape, and some smart ass would have his foot with some duct tape on it, you know, shaking it, you know, that kind of stuff back when YouTube was a lot more goofy than it is. And people didn't know <laughs> how to make content that well for themselves. It was, uh, it was a lot more novel back yeah. then. So mm -hmm. it, it was, it was hard to find anything decent. You had Patterson right. Gimlin, you had Freeman, uh, footage and a few things, uh, Oh, Harley. What's his name? Harley Hoff, uh, Hoffman. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hoffman. Uh, you know, you had, there were a few. And then MK Davis comes along and starts doing great work. And other well, people. That guy is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Just some of the, some of the stuff he did with the Patterson Gimlin film, bringing it out, sharpening it up, showing us that you look, you know, there's muscle under here. Oh, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> oh, thank you, Maggie. So much. Right back at you, dear. And now, do you think like, um, I know this is a, uh, something that I, I think you probably talked about before, but um, do you, Patty looks so completely different from what you guys are seeing. I don't think so. You don't? No. 
same and same can, bone structure same the face? type of yeah there's just hair wow. they're just there's appears to be hair on patty's face i don't think yeah. there is but the way it got sharpened up and the way it looks that there's more hair on the face but we're also talking about a creature that i believe are as different from one another as human beings are absolutely what we see mostly there's no hair on their face the yep. Indians didn't have, and I don't want people to get offended because I say Indian. I talk about this all the time why I say that. I don't think it's disrespectful. I think it's more respectful to say Indian. <clears throat> but that's just my opinion. Uh, they didn't grow hair on their face. Um, you know, it's just not something that we see down there. I've yet to see one that, have, that has that. I'm not saying they don't, but we could be talking about a species, a subspecies, a mixture of things in between there may be some humans thrown in there there may be a pure uh you know version of these creatures that have just bred and bred and spread you know through the land for sure and so that's why i think if you really look at patty she's got the cone head um the size and when you get a chance to see the face, especially up close, I, I think it looks a lot like what we see in the, uh, <clears throat> I'll throw the old back up, up here, the old banner. banner. I, I think that's pretty close. Put some hair on. Such a cool... He may have a beard. We don't, we can't see his bottom of his face. That's such a crazy picture, man. <laughs> this is the best part right here when you see this. That's so yeah. crazy. Jesus from Breaking Bigfoot. Go subscribe to Breaking Bigfoot also. Yeah, he, he did this all. for us. Yeah. He's got one of the best Bigfoot images you'll ever see. And he got it in Texas. Does he? Absolutely. I'll send it to you. Yeah, please it, uh, do. <clears throat> I, I talked to him and he's going to let me. I'm going to put it in the Odyssey and talk about it. Of course, obviously give him credit. It's his. Uh, but I got permission from him first. So you're y'all going to get to see it in the Odyssey if you haven't seen it yet. It's it's insane. It, it just how close he was only he was forty yards away, and uh, never saw it. But going back, and there it is: the whole face, clear shoulder, head, and it's when you hear you know the old the Spanish missionaries in the fifteen hundreds came <clears throat> and saw these creatures, and they called them the face on the chest people. <laughs> and when you see this, you'll understand why that's what they called them. So, well, yeah, they're, they're down in the, they got no neck, at least the, 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 the guy that we saw, he didn't have no neck. It was just sitting down, you know, in between his shoulders, like you said, on his chest. Yeah, absolutely. I do have so I just don't want to miss, I miss questions all the time. I do read back through the chat sometimes y'all. Um, and I see I missed so many things, so just know that it's not intentional. <clears throat> um, here's Miss Leslie. Uh, they want to come to see us, to peek at us. They don't want us going to them. I agree. Fully they agree. Don't, they don't like it. I mean, hard enough to go after one. I don't think you can do it, actually. <clears throat> do if you do go after them and they don't, and, and you happen to be get close to them somehow, Mark has has been hit. They've been charged at. Uh, just there, it's not gonna be good for you. So, to me, there's no real reason to go after them unless you have some kind of death wish and you just want to, you know, hopefully somebody will come along and find the camera. Just be filming when you do it because <clears throat> you're probably not gonna make it out if you mess with them too much. Uh, Carrie and Kyle, maybe they're trying to figure out if, uh, if they were male or female. Maybe. Possible. I think. I think they watch us closely enough that they know the difference. I think they watch us that closely. Mm. Um, what the tongue thing is, I don't know. Um, well, you know why I, I hypothesize that about like it being a scent thing is like snakes do it. That's how they detect their prey, right? If these things are, and I believe that in, in a lot of ways they're very, um, you know, they're so evolved to live in that environment that, Maybe they have multiple ways to pick up, a, you know, the scent or to differentiate what animal and what creature is what. That, that was that was my thought process behind it. I mean, I'm not no scientist, but 
Yeah. Uh, I, like, again, I just think they watch us all the time. I don't. Uh, that's what I would do. I think we are probably the only real threat to them to oh, a degree, yeah. and that's just because we have guns. You know, people can say what they want about these creatures. If you get a big enough gun, you can put one down. I know mm-hmm. you. Can, I know you can do it. You get a seven millimeter magnum that will take down an elephant. Mm-hmm. The Sasquatch, uh, I don't think, especially if you got it in the head. I mean. It's probably going to be over. Plus, we've heard stories of people shooting these creatures and kill them. Shot one out of a tree, another one came and grabbed it and scaled mm-hmm. a cliff straight up. I mean, it was like Thanksgiving or something. Mm-hmm. The officer comes out. You know, I've probably heard that story. I'm not gonna sit here and go through it, but I mean, blood all in the snow, huge 17, 18 inch footprints all over the place. <clears throat> I mean, uh, so I know that they, a high powered rifle is probably going to take one down, but I would not recommend anyone ever shooting one. For any reason, if you want to shoot one, shoot it with a camera. Take a camera with you, throw your gun down, and just start filming. I had a camera the day I saw mine. I had a Motorola Razor in my pocket, and not once did I think to take it out and use it. Oh. But I think if you have a level of awareness that you can have that thought. I mean, I've been doing it this long, 15 years looking into this subject. I was standing at the back of my pickup truck and Pam, Paul, Pam and Paul's driveway when vocalizations start going off all around me. And it wasn't until after I texted Pam and I thought, oh, camera. Even then, and I caught the last one. That was the, I did happen to catch the last one. So, <laughs> so it's understandable why we don't have really good stuff. You got to have the camera going all the time. And the problem you run into with that is you got a ton of footage to go through. Not only that, lot. but they move so fast. Like I, another I, one. Like a cartoon, man. Like I, it's it's crazy. And you know, I've heard so many people talk about not, not even when they're running, but when they walk, it's like a, I don't know if you're a wrestling fan, but this is what it reminded me of, like seeing this thing walk. Was like, do you know who the Undertaker is? Oh yeah. Okay, so the Undertaker had an entrance at, at a WrestleMania event once, where he was like, he was on a, uh, what do they call those things? Like the 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 belt at like the airport that you stand on, and it and it just kind of moves you forward. Oh yeah. Very, that's what it looked like. That's mobile, what this mobile thing- sidewalk. Yeah, that's what this thing when it walked, that's what it reminded me of. It was there was no no bouncing, no it just was That's like, because they walk the right way. We don't walk the right way. We vault ourselves over our hips. That's why our hip joints wear out and our knees wear out because of how we walk and we have a straddle step. They don't seem to do that. Watch the Paul Freeman footage. You see that yep. guy step up and down, and then it's just smooth the rest of the way. Yep. Patty's the same way. And if you look at the tracks, they're it's a tightrope, one in one in front of the other. Some females walk that way. Human females do walk that way, but they're wearing high heels when they do it. Right. So that I've they're noticed. models usually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> even if they're not, they do. They do tend to walk that way. And maybe you have to when you wear heels. I don't know. I've never worn those myself or maybe i need to try it just so i can <laughs> point john if they wear if they make a size 12 d uh yeah i'll maybe <laughs> i'll try on a pump or two <laughs> maybe not i'd be like six foot nine then that'd be awesome uh, uh john uh mr kyle does your family speak openly about this shared experience or avoid it good question no they it's it's not spoken about my dad never told my mother never um and, i never told know. my wife and how far along are we now 1994 we're in 2020 almost 2023 i mean it's been a long time never told her i told her and she thought i was nuts <laughs> 28 years ago <laughs> yeah long time so no it's not and when i did try to speak to my dad about it um you know he uh i i, I don't know what it was we don't know what it was could have been anything that kind of response is what you get sure and then you 
start to hear when you actually look into the subject, you start to hear other people having these experiences. And then here comes the names, mm-hmm. Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Oma, Grassman, Wild Man, Skunk Ape, Rougarou. And I when well, I get into that, I know what Rougarou is. I just know what the people are where I'm from. Call Sasquatch is Rougarou. Mm-hmm. It's probably all just Rougarou is a title. It's just a monster in the woods. It could be anything. But there's so many of those things come out. And now you now you can identify with these people, not just through the name, but through their experience. And that's I think that's helpful, too. So at least you have gotten that far with it. It stayed with you this long. It, how, how could it not? Uh, but I, for me, the more time that I put between that day and where I am now. When I think about it, there's just a few parts that I really remember Mm -hmm. that I really, that are just stuck in my head. Just a few of those instances in there. I don't really remember the entire thing. There's probably some things that happened that I don't remember that aren't to me, I guess aren't noteworthy, but I remember the things that, that are noteworthy that happened Mm -hmm. and that that's gotta be with you and anybody. I mean, Sure. All we, all we can do is tell, tell it the way we remember it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, that's what reality is. Reality is perception. It's not actuality. What mm-hmm. actually happened. Uh, we only know if you're there and have a perfect photographic memory, I guess. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm starring all the caps. Y'all been going through here. Do you think and, they, um, do you think they live, uh, longer than us? You think they, maybe, maybe I know they, it's, it's a very, you know, you can't, it's, there's no answer to it, but something that I've thought a lot about just because of the, the physical capabilities of these things, like, it's just nuts. It's nuts. It's just, I, I, there's just no word for, for what I've seen. The, the, the one that we saw in the, in Bridgewater Triangle was the, the weirdest, the craziest thing that I've, uh, it was on its, it was on its toes and fingers on all fours, not on its feet. It was on its toes and fingers, on all fours. Uh, it was the and it, it and it popped up from there, and uh, you know, in an instant, in a second, again, so smooth, like nothing, like. You gotta give me a smooth? second. I lost my internet. Oh. It's just going to be just a second. I'm on my slow internet right now. I have my fast one going, so it died. Won't be but a second. I hope. And I apologize. I didn't. I should have had it plugged in. Come on. I'm in the middle of the desert. Where are you? Hold on. Let me get. I got to find it again. See, Bigfoot doesn't have to worry about this stuff. (laughs) I mean, I can hear every other word you're saying. I don't know if you guys can hear me at all. We can hear you. I can hear you. Fully. Yeah, but that I don't know if you can hear me, but I'll I'll talk just so there's not dead air anyway, I guess. Um I appreciate that. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I heard no, the the one in, at the Bridgewater Triangle that we saw, he was uh it was on like fingers and toes, uh, but on all fours in such a strange position, and I thought to myself with the size of this thing, much bigger than the one that we saw in the Berkshires. I mean, much bigger. Like this thing was just gigantic. Um, and I didn't even tell you the one of the Berkshires was probably around seven and a half to eight feet, maybe I'm guessing. But this thing was gray and it was on fingers and toes on all fours. And uh, the, the amount of strength in your fingers and toes to hold up the weight that this thing was carrying just to this day still baffles me 
And it came up out of that position again in such a smooth, like, uh, uh, it, it just kind of just came straight up nice and smooth. Like, uh, um, I don't know. Uh, like, uh, I actually heard a guy describe one of them standing up like, uh, like a puppet coming up into the scene at a puppet show, like just coming straight up nice and smooth like that. And that's basically what this thing did. It just popped up like that and rose right up and stood there. But it was the craziest thing. The position it was in was just nuts, man. You could see the foot flexed in the middle too, which was pretty, was pretty neat because, you know, they talk about that, um, that hinge in the foot and you could see it clears day. Right. Yeah. Finally got my internet back. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I don't, it was at like 40% and I don't know why I didn't think to plug it in. I'm in the middle of nowhere in West Texas. I'm South of Pecos, Texas on highway 285, probably about 20 miles. And if you look at that on Google earth, all you're going to see is a bunch of little white dots. Those are all well pads for oil <laughs> and there's oh, not geez. a tree. For hundreds of miles so i'm in the middle of the desert uh there's there are trees out here they're about a foot and a half two feet tall they call them <laughs> trees it's bushes to me uh mesquite it's everywhere oh. out here and cactus and yeah you know they couldn't they couldn't have drilled for oil in fiji or anything like that they had to do it <laughs> out here in the middle of nowhere so that's this is what i've got i've got a portable hotspot for internet and i have two of them actually because it, it, this computer uses a lot of it but i always save one just for shows and it went dead <laughs> and it, it, when i when i saw the thing start to circle i was like oh my gosh <laughs> but the other one's out of high speed that's why you were just kind of probably hearing me crackle a little bit and i could hear like every other word you were saying but no, you were clear the whole time i was yeah that's i could hear unbelievable you yeah. All right, well, it, it wouldn't have worked because I couldn't hardly hear what you were saying. So it was actually on me. <laughs> anyway, I've got a lot, about eight questions started up here. So we're going to get to these. Uh, Dr. Z. Smith says that the government knows we have the Bigfoot, et cetera. Why will they not validate it? Um, I think there's a lot of questions, a lot of answers to that. You could probably point to money. Mm -hmm. Um if you talk to any wildlife officer about a panther or a wildcat or a bobcat or not bobcats, but uh, mountain lions, they lie they to will, us about them here. They'll deny yep. that they're around. Yep. They're told to deny it. Yes, they exist, but they're not around here. Mm -hmm. BS, here's a picture of one. They won't even look at it. Nope. So I think there's a fear factor there with that, and maybe that's part of it too when it comes to wildlife officers. In 2019, before COVID hit, and I looked this up, in the United States alone, people spent $986 billion, almost a trillion dollars on outdoor activities. That's Plenty also put, that's not just outdoor activities, but that's also about 40, 50 billion dollars in logging. Could you imagine the logging industry? Maybe it's the logging industry that's helping keep these things hidden. They're out there all the time. You think mm -hmm. these guys for sure are going to know mm -hmm. that they're out there. Maybe it's them because if they're validated and then of course there had to be a, a type specimen and it's determined that this is some type of human primate that just made it survived yep. right alongside us hiding from us. Um, did you imagine the tons of litigation involved? Oh God. Bureau of land management and PETA. You'd never log another tree. Nope. Anywhere. Nope. So I think that's probably part of it. Um, I think it explains a lot. It certainly uh, puts puts some big holes in the what we've been taught about evolution for the last two hundred years. Absolutely. And where we came from, where nope. we came from, these these hominoid skulls that they've been digging out of the ground and showing us these heavy, thick, robust, eight high, uh, no forehead. You know, really high set eyes, huge night vision eyes, large nasal cavities and and large, you know, jaws. Uh, that's not our ancestors. That's Bigfoot's people. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what these creatures look like. Is yep. that that's the bone structure. That's what we look for in, mm -hmm. in the bush when mm -hmm. we when we do this. So I those those are my answers to it. Um, I'll tell you this. 
and something that was very revealing to us. Mark and I created a website. It's called Impossible. And, you know, we put a question mark on it. But the, the main reason for that was from the saying, you know, remove everything that is impossible, whatever is left, no matter how unlikely has got to be the truth. Uh, I can't even tell you who said that, but that's kind of on the back of that while we called it that. And we can tell every single person that rents that film, we know where they're from. The second largest number from a single place, Tallahassee, Florida, five people from Tallahassee, Florida rented it. 79 people from Washington, D.C. rented our film. So it's creepy, kind of. 79 people from Washington, D.C. rented our film. That's creepy. And they're probably watching now, and I don't care. Uh, but what is that? That's a very, I mean, why such a huge number in that one place? Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. Not like there's a whole ton of big reports State. coming out of big uh, out of Washington D.C. Right. So to me, it was a little bit revealing, um, and I don't care if they know whoever it is, but just that was that was to me. And we talked about Lauren and I talked about that for a while. Um, nuts to me. That's why so many from Washington D.C. That's my question. But we can't see who they are. We can just see where they're where they were uh, when they rented it. So, all right, we'll move on from that. Nana, Anna, good to see you again. How tall was it, Kyle? I think we covered that, but you can. It was uh, about seven, between seven and eight feet. Um, and the female was probably about, um, probably about six feet, maybe a couple inches taller than that. The one in the Berkshires that we haven't really discussed was way bigger. You talked about white teeth. Yeah. And. That's what I remember. And it maybe it was just in contrast to the darkness of the face. Could have been, yeah. But I think he was young. And that's why I think his teeth were so white. It's because yes. he was he was younger. You know who Paul White is? Of course I do. I know you do. You're <laughs> you're a wrestling fan. That's I got a, I got a stone cold t shirt on right now. <laughs> okay. Paul White is is he on there? What? Is he on is he on your shirt? The big show? Stone Cold? Oh, Paul White? No. Okay. It's Big Show, the wrestler, seven yep. foot tall, seven one, whatever. That body style, that's what the guy looked like. Like a barrel. Style. Barrel shaped body, absolutely. Yep. Straight up and down from shoulders to hips. And not all muscly, uh, just that, just like Big Show, only yep. a lot a bigger head. Uh, yeah. And probably maybe about the same size. I don't know, maybe been taller, might have been shorter. I don't know. He was. Standing down a grade and looking straight directly in my face from 80 feet away. But anyway, I diverge like uh, like Brad says. M says, I saw it instantly when clicked on video. It usually takes me forever. Oh, you're talking about Banner. Well, thank you, M's. I thought you'd seen Banner. Everybody had seen Banner. Thank you, M's. Appreciate that. I'm glad you were able to see it uh, because I'm quite proud of that. To me, that's the clearest Bigfoot image, and I I got it. I took that. That's what I'm so, I'm so proud of that. <laughs> I'd be proud of it too. Face is green, but then that's what hangs people up. But we're trying to we're trying to get beyond that and get people to understand uh, that this is why we don't see them. Look, people either looking for the wrong thing, or that you have caught them on film and you just don't know it. You're looking it for makes the wrong, perfect you're sense wrong. though. When you when you talk about it, when you show the evidence of the uh, the clear hair and what the light does when it reflects and refracts in that hair, and then I know you've talked about the oily skin. There's been a ton of people who've had handprints left on things, and they they look greasy all the time, right? I mean, everyone that I've ever seen, like when when one leaves a handprint on a car or on a back door, supposedly. They look greasy. So uh, it totally makes sense to me that that's what would happen. Yeah. When you put all those things together, you're absolutely right. That's, that's just how I think about it. It's not hard to imagine why we've had such trouble Yeah, uh, picking them up, seeing them when we're out there. Because I think Patty, we've been indoctrinated by Patty. Mm -hmm. And that's what everyone's looking for is that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they just don't seem to all look. We've got some on camera that do look like that. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, just like it. But for the most part, we see these human type faces. They're just big and they've got, look, I got one you guys are going to get to see tomorrow. His cone on his head has got to be a foot and a half tall from his brow. And you can see his face good. You can see his shoulder. And this is a recent image. That cone is so tall. And we call him Jack. Uh, got several images of him. Uh, call him Jack because Jack Napier was the Joker. Because he has that long face like the Joker. Uh, if you're an old Batman fan from the uh, from the 80s, the, the 89 Batman, Jack Napier. Uh, thanks, John. You can always count on that. We appreciate you very much. Uh, great booking tonight. Uh, visceral telling that. Yep. John's a psychologist, so. Thank, thank you, John. He, he listens to people all the time, so I trust his judgment. Absolutely. I trust my own judgment. Uh, I knew when I talked to you on the phone that you had seen this thing. Yeah. Uh, while you're here. Uh, Miss Leslie, again, I think humanity <clears throat> wants to believe they are, they are kind-hearted and loving, and some may be, but realistically, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's what we don't know. That's scary. You don't know how they're going to act. I know they can be aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. they can be aggressive. It's not. It's what they're capable of that bothers me. Knowing yeah. they're out there. When we go to Florida and places at night and we're going back, we're going to the bad place. When I go back this time, Mark said we're going to the one where the big ones hang out. And I, you know, that was a pucker moment for me too. And I'm sure <laughs> driving down there, that's all I'm going to think about <laughs> is that. But we're going and I'm, I'm going to try to do solo there uh live with with everybody in my hand on the phone so and i got something for you guys i got a seek thermal camera that has a screen that i can hold up and so you guys will have something to see when i do those so, so nice. uh it's my work thermal that i used to look to look at tanks uh to see how much fluids in the tanks because the fluids warm coming out of the ground uh the oil and water so I'm bringing it with me and uh, nice. my boss is probably watching. Um, we have two of them here, Corey. So don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll take good care of it because <laughs> my, because my company bought it. Uh, here's John again, deer and elk often open their mouths while smelling the does and cows while th there you go. That could very well be it. Getting that extra sense. Uh, but the only the only thing about that is he's standing there looking at me. He's standing he's there looking at you. Right. Well, what's, what else does he need? Right. That's my only thing about that. But it could be that. Um, that whole male female thing that could that could be a possibility too. Uh, just trying to determine if. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Just Leslie again. Told my father that same night and he told me he saw a skunk ape. See, they'll come out with it. And I heard it growing up my whole life. Except they were called, called them boogers. Yeah. Yeah. There's boogers out there in them woods. Look, where I'm from, we don't have street lights. We have booger lights. That's lawyers called them booger lights. It's just, you know, doctors, lawyers, high society people even call them that in South Mississippi. Uh, of course, you know, in South Mississippi, the the guy pumping your gas is pretty high society. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve, uh, why shoot? Why shop? Uh, I, hope, I hope I said that right, Steve. Uh, if not, I apologize. Uh, what town were you in? If you want to give that away. Oh gosh, um, you know I don't even remember. Uh, we were on October Mountain. That's all. That's all I can tell you. Um, it was 1994. I don't. I didn't know. You know, towns back then. I was just in the back of the car taking the ride. But I just know it was. It was October Mountain this time. But like I said, we'd gone to um, October a bunch of times, and then um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, is it Greylock or? I forget. But it was in oh. Connecticut, right? No, no. This is in Massachusetts. This is in the Berkshires. Okay. This is in the Still, Berkshires. it's, the, it's the, in the Northeast. Yeah. I mean, these, this is right, like, it's close to the Appalachian Trail. 
I want to say Pennsylvania is the third most reported sightings of any state. Washington, yeah. Florida, Pennsylvania. Yep. I think that's the order as far as the BFRO is concerned. You know, there these things get ported, reported to other places, but I would people if you're going to report your sighting, report it to the BFRO because they're going to they're going to take care of your sighting as, as long as they believe you. Anyway, um, real quick before I'm going to do these last two and then you uh you feel like coming back talking about the other things that you've gone through yeah absolutely man yep. um shout outs to uh michael carter and miss kathleen roscos for those paypal donations thank y'all so very much greatly appreciated oh look who this is jen grover she is one of the she squatchers you guys need to go and subscribe to their channel uh great stuff they do there Hello and hugs. I want to hear your opinions on what happens after they are proven to exist. Let you go first on this one, Kyle. What do you think is oh going to happen? Boy. Um, I think, I th first, I think it's going to be really difficult to, to fully prove that they exist just based on the physical capabilities of these things. I don't know how you're ever going to catch one. I just don't. Between the strength and the speed, it's going to be really, really, really hard. And the camouflage. But if it happens, um, I think what you were talking about earlier is probably uh, a very likely scenario. You're going to have a ton of fighting between different organizations to um, get these things recognized as, you know, either part of the human race and then they're protected. And that becomes a major issue economically for certain industries. Um, which which causes tons of problems. I think that's probably the most likely scenario. Well, uh, I, I can't disagree, disagree with that. The thing is, they are recognized in certain places. Washington, Absolutely. There are warning signs in different places. Um, it's treated as novelty, uh, but I think they're serious <laughs> when they put them out there. I think they'd have to be. People are reported, you know, have reported seeing things like this in this area, watch out. And I think that's great if people take heed. <clears throat> but I think it would be you, who are you going to trust, okay? Because they're not just a bunch of researchers and people out there that have different opinions about Sasquatch. They've got different facts. Mm -hmm. And that's how these things are presented. No, it's this. No, it's this. Well, who are you going to listen to? Who are you going to trust? I won't listen to any of them myself because unless they can tell me how they know this, how they know the things they know and can show me something. I hear, I hear people talking about certain markings on Sasquatch and I'm thinking you're looking at this thing and you're close enough to notice certain markings, but you can't pick the camera up and hit record. Mm -hmm. Or if you did and you're not showing us, what are you telling us for? Mm -hmm. Those are, those are my questions to, to some of these uh, claims about things that they know Sasquatch do. They hunt a mile apart from each other. They, the males will stay at 8,000 feet and the females are, you know, over here swimming. So I don't, <clears throat> I don't know how they know these things without observing them. You know, at the whole migration thing is the same thing. You got to observe one and then observe it again somewhere else. Know it was the same one and know that it was repeated and not mm -hmm. just something that they decided to do then. So all these, all these things that muddy the waters, the cart is so far ahead of the horse at this point. We yeah. don't even have a good enough picture to convince people they're out there. Right. We're getting them. We're getting there. It's, it's just, it's such got to get very lucky first, but you can't get it sitting on the couch. You got to be out there to do it. Mm -hmm. We got to convince people they're there first. And then maybe we can get into some of the things and then you get into the paranormal side of these things. I know, but, and people are experiencing this stuff while they're around. I've seen the, I saw a light. I can't explain. I can't rationalize it, Yep. but I saw it. It doesn't make yep. any sense to me, but I did see it and I caught it on camera too. You guys are actually yep. going to get to see that. Um, so what's going to happen is kind of hard to say. Uh, and it depends on how it's brought out. Is it going to be brought out by the mainstream media? Um, or is it just going to be a fly by 
government acknowledgement that, okay, there is something out there. We don't know what it is, just like they did with the UFOs. Uh, but yeah, maybe you should watch out. If it comes out like that, <clears throat> it's going to be pretty soft. If yeah. it's brought out a body, you know, video everywhere, uh, people are still not going to want to believe it because there are plenty of people out there that are perfectly willing to blind themselves to things they don't want to see, things they don't want to believe. Yep. You, you know, you can't, you don't want to mess up the sanctuary. <clears throat> you know, they're, they're, uh, they're little own private paradise with their own little private utopia. People don't want to mess that up. Yep. So they don't want to believe it. It's not here is what probably the thought would be. But I would, I would say that uh, you're probably wrong. I think if anybody here has ever hunted in your life, you've probably been watched. You so think there's, answer. you think that like even here in Connecticut, do you think that there's a, a an abundance of them? I always go with the, the old white tail deer, man. You probably heard me say on. Day this. I've said it a thousand times on here because on one of the shows, it's well, an old show in the beginning. There was a guy talking about, there are 63,000 Sasquatch. And I thought, man, that is awfully specific. And he didn't say why on the show. But come asking him later, he came up with that number by counties. There's so many per county. And I got to thinking, you know, uh, that's just, uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think most people don't really realize how vast just the United States is and so i say that my question is how many white tailed deer do you think there are when he says well i don't know well guess you guessed how many sasquatch there are guess how many white tailed deer there are and i think it was like three million or four million and it's 10 times that yeah it's 30 yeah. million as many as 35 million i'm talking about I'm talking about elk and moose and black tail and and every other kind of deer that we have here, just white-tailed deer. And how hard are they to see and find when you're looking for them? We're talking about yeah. something that you can bait up that's easily patterned. Mm -hmm. They're difficult to find. Yeah. For most people, they are. They are. Even when you're, you know, this one's called hunting and not killing uh, or harvesting. Right. So that's how I see that there could be a million of these creatures out there easily. Easily. 30, 30 million deer. There couldn't be a million Sasquatch, really? Yes, there could. So that's where I stand on it. There may only be 63,000 as far for all I know. Um, but while all, while I'll, another thing I look at is their ability to stay hidden and the amount of sightings we've had just since 1995 that have been reported, more than yep. 15,000. Yep. Now, that's, that's all over. That's Canada and Mexico and Alaska and everywhere, United States. I'm not sure if that's across the pond or anywhere over there, but they're seen and sighted over there too. Australia, the Yowie, one of the best thermals you'll ever see is from the Yowie hunters. Mm -hmm. Dean Harrison and his crew, those guys, mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. And then you th th think about how many people just don't, won't say it. I mean, you know, how long did it take you to say it? How long did it take me to talk about it? How many other people are out there with the same that. issue? Give me one second, Cal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead if you want to keep it going, and uh, yeah, we'll, yeah, sure. we'll, we'll wrap it up with the with the ending of the show when I get my internet back. But go um, ahead. But yeah, how, you know how many people are out there that are just afraid to talk about it? There, there's probably so, so, so many for whatever reason. Whether it's a, you know, the job position that you have where you're afraid that. You know, if somebody hears you talking about this, you're going to lose that position. You're a military man who flies planes. If you talk, start talking about a monster that exists, they're probably going to go, well, you ain't flying planes no more, pal. You're nuts, so sorry. We're grounding you. Um, and for whatever other reasons, uh, I, I, I agree. I think, there's, I think there's a lot. And again, um, going back to like the, the green on the face where people have a hard time accepting that like they, they look – that this is them and they look green because of, you know, um, why would, why is it so hard to believe when you, when you look at animals uh, and I believe that these things are, you know, part animal. I do think that they lean more to the human side for the most, like for the most part. 
um, until you get them mad. Then it's the, you know, the beast in them is definitely there. But when you look at animals and you're talking about the deer, even uh, just about every animal out there uh, is adapted to hide in its environment as, as perfectly as it can. So why are these any different? And uh, I think the answer is they're not. They're not. So if they're around trees that are green, um, makes perfect sense to me that they're gonna they're gonna blend in with that color um, through whatever you know necessary adaptations. Um, and and you know and then the uh, the paranormal stuff you touched on too is uh, yeah. I didn't believe in that at all, man. I thought it was, uh, even after my sighting, like I thought that that was complete BS, excuse my uh, abbreviation, but I thought it was crap. I thought there's no, there's no way there's any paranormal, anything to these things, but <laughs> I'm telling you right now, man, what I've well, seen in the Bridgewater Triangle is so weird. I just have no... I don't have any other explanation. Lights and orbs and weird, man. Well, do you hear something scratching? I do. Okay. I got rid of it. All right. I got it back just for a moment. So we're going to wrap it up. Kyle, I want you to come back because I know you got more to talk about, if you will. Absolutely, man. Awesome, man. Love to have you. Love to have you back. I got something for you guys here at the end. Uh, if you want to hang around for it, it's some, some stuff that I wrote. I do this every now and then. Um, so this is this is the uh, nobody cares report. So, <laughs> all right. I asked myself a lot of questions. I learned this from my father. He said, if you ask yourself questions before you react or take action, uh, it's impossible to lie to yourself in most situations. So try this. Ask yourself what really matters to you. I can tell you what doesn't matter. Whether you live a life of opulence or decadence or a life that's in the gutter, it all ends the same. Sorry, Kyle. I'm going to put you on mute for a second. It all ends the same. Most people are happy doing good. Some are happy doing harm. So ask yourself what you're happy with and you'll not only have to be honest with yourself but you'll have a good guide for how you should approach life and what actions to take or refrain from taking in specific situations where you should stop and think before you react helen keller said many people have the wrong idea of what constitutes true happiness it is not attained through self-gratification but through fidelity to a worthy purpose Ernest Hemingway said there is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former, former self. So be better than you are yesterday. And I hope y'all are happy making the effort. Thanks again, Kyle, for showing up here tonight, man. I appreciate you so much. Um, thanks again to, to, for everyone for the PayPal donations and everybody that shows up. Our moderators do such a wonderful job here. And uh, I'll try to be better prepared with the internet next time and, and not have all these interruptions. But hey, we do it live. It's uh, without a net. So here we are. What you see is what you get. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us here. And tomorrow, if you're a member, you're going to get to see me at 8 o'clock p.m. Central showing you 40 Bigfoot images. So hope to see you guys then. And uh, y'all have a good night.